through the wilderness into the promised land, took it away from the giants and, and all the people that were there. It looked impossible. Everything that God did there was impossible, but with God, nothing shall be impossible. But after they got into the promised land, as Moses said, he said, when you get comfortable, when everything's going well for you, you'll forget God. They said, oh, no, we won't. No, 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 we won't do that. And they got to the place that God brought them to, and they forgot the Lord. In fact, in Jeremiah chapter 2, the Word of God tells us that the people of Israel, he said, hath forgotten me days without number. Think about it. All the people, and the same is true today in our land. How many people that you see out there moving around, interacting, doing all kinds of things, do they ever think about God? I had a brother-in-law who is now uh, deceased, but he used to say, yep, he said, I'm thankful. He said, I haven't had to pray for a long time. Haven't had to pray for a long time? Well, that's warped thinking, isn't it? We need to pray like we need to breathe. Constantly. Pray without ceasing. We find ourselves doing that as we drive down the road. In our homes, every place. Every so often we'll just start praying a little bit here and there. And then there are those seasons of prayer where we'll call upon the Lord. That's what gets us through. Praise His holy name. No, we do need the Lord every day. He is our hope, without question. Now Israel had gotten into this position where they did some terrible things. Terrible, terrible things. They, had, they got in a situation where they were adding on to the temple. They made a special area in the temple for homosexuals. The sodomites. In other words, yes, they made allowance for the queers. Oh, I'm not supposed to talk about that. You know, Obama signed that thing, you know, to, that makes me an outlaw because I'm talking about homosexuality. No, I'll tell you what, God feels the same way about it be, before Obama signed it and after Obama signed it. It doesn't make any difference what Obama did. But they made provision for the homosexuals. They mass murdered babies, offering them in sacrifices. Terrible things they did. Almost sounds like the United States of America. And since God never changes, that tells me we're in for it as a country. Prophetically, the Word of God declares this nation will fall. The cities of the nations will fall. Everything's going to come apart at the seams because God has reserved his wrath for the end. And when it comes, it's going to hit hard. There are a lot of things going on right now that lead to that, that show us that this is indeed coming. But we're going to go back first to Old Testament Israel and look at the actions of the king of Israel, I should say Judah, the king of Judah, and something that he did that should send shock waves through us all. In the 36th chapter of Jeremiah, it starts out by saying, And it came to pass, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, and don't you appreciate the word of the Lord? <clears throat> when God speaks, he's the one who spoke and brought the whole creation into existence by the power of his voice. Now God is going to speak. And it says, he says to Jeremiah, Take thee a roll of a book and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel and against Judah and against all the nations from the day I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah, even into this day. He's saying, I want you to write something down, Jeremiah. 
I want you to write down what I'm going to do to this people and to this land and to these nations. Now, why is God doing this? <clears throat> I want to tell you something about our Lord. He is always ready to forgive. He's not a hard taskmaster. God does love us. But let's face it, things have to be his way because he's God. All right? You can't vote to change his mind. You know, we've got a Congress that likes to vote things in and vote things out. And, and most of it's pretty evil. As the scripture says, they frame mischief by a law. Robbery by legislation? Yeah, <laughs> happens all the time, doesn't it? Well, you know, what can you expect when you got 274 millionaire uh, representatives and they didn't have a million when they got there? And they don't get paid enough to get a million while they're there, unless they're there for a long time. I don't know if you realize it or not, but the, world, the Bible tells us the whole world lieth in wickedness. And everything out there is a scam and it is corrupt and this world is living a lie. And they want you to believe that lie. They don't want you to think. Because if you think, and oh, if you ever yield yourself to God and he begins to reveal things to you, you could be a lot of trouble to them. Hmm. But here is why the Lord wants Jeremiah to write this down. It's to give Israel, I should say Judah in this case, hope. He says, it may be. Now when something may be, that gives you hope. Right? It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Now isn't that an awesome thing for God to say? He's saying, oh, I want this written down. I want them to hear it. They may turn from their evil. That's the purpose. Now God gave us his word here for the same purpose. To give us hope. But anyway, he goes on in verse 4. It says, then Jeremiah called Baruch. That's a Hebrew word, Baruch. It means blessed. The son of Neriah. And Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord, which he had spoken unto him upon a roll of a book. So Jeremiah is hearing directly from God. He's dictating the word. And Baruch is writing it down. Came directly from God. Oh, a message from the Lord. And I'll tell you this. I would rather have God tell me anything than tell me nothing. And Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up. I cannot go into the house of the Lord. Now, isn't that something? Here's a prophet of God. He's not allowed in church. They shut him out. He could not go into the temple. Why, you wouldn't want to bring truth into the temple. Something might happen. You bring truth in where there's a whole bunch of lies, there's going to be a reaction. Therefore, go thou and read in the roll which thou hast written from my mouth the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day, and also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their cities. He's saying, I want everybody to hear this. It isn't like those things the government does where they don't want anybody to hear about. They just want to take a vote on it. Last night the Senate voted and they passed 